This is not a thrifting haul, I assure you. <laughs> hey guys, Bots and Blasters here. I have a lot of stuff as you can see. So what happened is I run a Nerf group called the Mid Valley Nerf Club and uh, we have donation tiers where essentially somebody can donate either cash or goods in order to uh, to basically pay their dues, pay their membership because the group basically continues to run by other members pitching in. It's just not all on one or two people. I'll, I'll say for the record, it's free to play. All my Nerf Wars are always free to play. I never charge. There is never a charge to play. In fact, most of the time, I provide my own darts as well as a loaner bin. What the tier systems do is they give us general funds for the club in case, hey, we're running low on community darts. We can pitch some in, go buy some, especially if people have been showing a lot of interest in something like, let's say, Vortex or Rival, then we can go out and buy additional ammo for that demand that's building. Our first tier is about $20, give or take. And usually in addition to getting that, we also give you a, um, a name tag. Uh, I don't have mine with me, my tactical vest is inside. I apologize. At tier two, which is about $40, that's when we do the dog tags. Uh, the dog tags, of course, say the group name, which is the Mid Valley Nerf Club, which is the MVNC. Now, if you get to tier three, essentially we give you a, a title or a position within the uh, within the organization, which in reality means nothing. It's just for fun, it's just for fluff. It's just to show that if somebody has a title that, uh, hey, they've been there a while, you know, and they're, big, they're a big contributor to keeping this uh, group still going. My friend Damien donated all these blasters plus additional things off to the side. And I was like, dude, this is way too much. And he was like, no, I insist. You know, I want to try to help out. I'm going to toss this stuff out anyway. Sometimes it's trash, sometimes it's treasure. But for anyone who's in the mining space knows a lot of this stuff can be opened up and repurposed or resurfaced or even used for wild card rounds. He told me basically he bought this lot for 10 bucks off of, uh, I think it was Craigslist or Macari or OfferUp, one of those websites. And he was like, I only wanted one thing, the rest of it I want to donate. And he donated a bunch, not just what's here on the table. So we're going to go through everything, kind of give it a once over. I'm going to decide what to keep, what to toss. And like I said, these blasters technically aren't mine. They belong to the club. But since I am the uh, quartermaster, as it were, I take care of everything. So yeah. Okay, so first up, we got a barricade. A pretty bad barricade. Does not want to, does not want to engage. And it's rusted. It's going to be a good thing or a bad thing because I've been actually looking for a barricade to do a mod on to have fun with. Okay, we got it open. It is actually not as bad inside as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot more corroded. So this might have some use. The barricade is not made to fit elite style darts. It's actually made to fit the old school uh, like whistler tip rounds. So you have to do a little bit of rebarreling if you're going to use one of these. Uh, but not for what I have in mind. It'll be fun. <laughs> All right, next up, I'm just going to start going from the side over here. A Tech 6 was in the lot. So, and it still works, which tells me the spring in here is good, which means I'm probably going to gut it for its spring. Sorry, Jake. All right, next over here, a Rapid Red. It actually looks not bad. Okay, well, I mean, there's some scuffing and some marking and what have you, but that can easily be painted over. The battery slot is minty. Ooh, that makes me very hopeful. Slam some batteries in it. Batteries have been placed inside. No. No. Looks like we might have a dead one. There is life in the old girl. Although those flywheels do not sound happy. I will have to check this out more in depth, but it revs up, it turns on, it works. Although a little anemically, I think that the uh, safety in there that keeps it from revving without anything in might be worn out because it feels like it is not engaging. Yeah, like I really have to like force it, but that could also be bad flywheels, but we will check that out later in my own time. All right, next up, a double fire. I just reviewed one of these, but this one, it's not like there's something loose in there, but at least it came with some darts I can throw in the plinking bin. And it comes with the extra ammo, which is cool. Oh yeah, that's engaged and it is not firing. Okay, that's an easy fix. Probably the string 
is not catching back there. That's easy to fix. If nothing else, this is fodder for future projects. All right, next up, I will reach deep and get this. This is one of those arsenal. When I say arsenal, I usually have to show the packs. I will post the pack here-ish. Basically a remake of like a predator or a hunter or whatever Busby decides to call it. I'm gonna load with a couple of the flinging darts and a mag and uh, let's see how it do. All right, went ahead and I got six just for the random darts that we just got from the double fire. I'm gonna slam it in, let's see how it works. All right, move some things around a little before I test fired because over here I have a uh, bin that I generally shoot into. Let's move it a little closer just to make ease of cleanup better. I will also say after I put this in, I noticed I really like this profile, like nice and sleek all the way through. That sounded funky. Everything's good though. Two. This was the issue with the old breach system. If it didn't line just right, you might have to manually go in and finger it down. Giggity. Last shot. It fired. This one's okay, it's still functional. Uh, it's still gonna go in the project bin though. All right, next up, I'll get it out of the way. The blazing bow, which a lot of people would be like, why are you excited to see this? Well, you see my naive friend, not only can this be singled down to shoot elites, which is very useful, at least back in the day, this was a really effective way of sniping from half range. Uh, the blazing bow as well as the big bad bow, those were chef's kiss. I'll put some photos up here. But why this is more interesting nowadays, especially in modern games, is because this tube diameter will fit Mega XL. Now we can't fire it yet because they have these two big air holes here that need to be filled and this air restrictor does not engage when it's pushed down all the way. Just barely. But if you go in there, rip that out, I'll show you a demonstration. With the Air Zone Scorpion Bow, I picked up on a trip. Same basic concept. Single it down, shoot it off. Yeah, boy. So blazing bows, big bad bows. Uh, anything that has this big outer diameter can now be repurposed yet again for Mega XL. So, all right, next up, I'll get this out of the way. This is even a blaster. This is a Power Rangers, I believe, Dino Fury Morpher Blaster. Essentially, you pull it down, it would disengage, you would slide some form of morphing device in here, and then it would activate. And this would change, there'd be colors and lights and everything. And it uses three little watch batteries, the LR44s. I don't have any of those at the moment, but this isn't a blaster, it doesn't actually fire, just is a literal RP toy for kids who like Power Rangers. And I happen to do like Power Rangers, so yay, this is coming home with me. Or rather, it's staying home with me. <laughs> All right, also, we got an X-Shot Super Drum, an old school one, which, no drum of course, but if we listen to it, that spring is still beefy, which tells me this can be reused for integrations. For nothing else, gutting internals. You never know when you're gonna need a spring to help power something up or increase the strength of something else. Next up, you guys have probably been eyeing this for a while, a sledge fire, which everybody seems to always love sledge fires. Not me. This sounds jammed and janky, and this is a perfect <laughs> example as far as why I don't like sledge fires. The gear system in here is just too finicky for anything. Look at that. Yeah, I doubt this can be fixed, but I will gut it and use the, str the springs inside for other future projects. All right, next, a pair of retaliators. These are very chalky, like somebody took them to a beach. I'm still gonna fire them though. We will give them due process. They might just need to be maintained. All right then. It's loading, is it shooting? Oh, it's shooting really hard, in fact. This might just be slightly upgraded. That one hit so hard it bounced out. 
Well, all right, there's still some life left in this one. It just needs a lot of maintenance. All right, let's go with the Sister Blaster, which you can, you guys hear that rattle. Ooh, that doesn't make me hopeful. It's like it's filled with little rocks. I'm not hopeful for this one, but um, let's see if it fires. It does still fire. Wow. Say what you want about old Radley. Shit. That was all of them. Even now it's continuing to drop kitty litter or something. Still, the internals are still good and solid. It needs a very deep cleaning. Not enough nerf, I'm looking at you when you're gonna put out your detailing videos. I need some help, my dude. Also included in the lot were these uh, goofy little bows. <laughs> now, the thing is people might stick their nose up on these and laugh, and I don't blame you. I'd be right there with you, except these are really fun to use for wild card rounds. Because people do not expect them. If you do happen to get a tag with a dorky blaster like this, oh my god, does it piss people off. So, for the sake of hee hees, let's go ahead and open this one and shoot it off. Can we talk about these darts for a minute? They look almost elite-ish, except there's extra padding here on the head and a suction cup tip. I gotta try to fire these out of something else in another video. <laughs> so apparently this is how they intend for you to store the ammo. <laughs> Although, to be fair, that's a decent air seal. If this fires at all, guys, I will be impressed and giddy. <laughs> it fired. It fired. Oh my god, let's do a couple more. Oh my god, this will piss off so many people. I'm thinking for a Valentine's Day, maybe like a type of like Cupid game or something. <laughs> oh my god, that'll be fun. All right, the next couple of things that were donated by day were um, things that aren't necessarily blasters, but are definitely needed for a club. First of which being a pack of Dark Zone watermelon darts. Really cool refill pack. He just asked if... Um, we needed anything for the club that wasn't a blaster, and I was like, we're running low on darts, but you know, when I get paid in a couple of weeks, I'll take care of that on my own. And he was like, hey, no worries, I got you. Boom, hand it over. These are the best darts to actually play with that are full length. I stand by that. Last one my buddy Damien donated was a pack that he had gotten in, I believe from eBay. So I had to remove the packing info. It's a pack of these Warzone bunkers. These are like the old school ones, I believe from the Bunker brands before they got brought out by Hasbro. So here we have US Army crates, radioactive barrel, biohazard barrel, and sandbag wall. Sandbag wall is the smallest, but I think it covers the most distance. And the rest of these are about three feet by like two feet, give or take. So not a great amount of cover, but if you stack them or work with natural cover that you have already, these work out great. I'm not going to open these right now because they're a big mess to take out, put up, whatever. But I have used these before in the past in wars. And the reason why I haven't used them currently is because it's been hella windy since we got a hurricane hit Florida and then hit south of us in Mexico. So we've been getting all that wind. So things like this have not been like ideal to set up. They will go flying, even with water in them. And pretty much just to look inside, they have been used. Yes, he told me already. Uh, but they still look in really good shape. I'm going to have to like put these up and see if they actually are. This one doesn't even look used. So that's a good thing. But cool. Barriers like these easily make simple games like in a backyard a lot more engaging, a lot more fun. New who guys, I'm Bots and Blasters. Like I said, this was not a thrift store haul. This was all donated to my Nerf Club. Some of it I'm going to keep. Some of it I'm going to gut. Some of it I'm going to donate. If you liked this video, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, because apparently that's important, that we need to do that now. Otherwise, YouTube does not know I exist. Also, thank everybody so, so much for getting 500 subs. I'm waiting until the community tab opens up for me in about a week or two, and then I will be doing a lot of posts there, keeping you guys engaged, 
as far as what's going on. I have a link to a coffee down below. If you want to buy me a coffee for whatever reason, I greatly appreciate it. We have a Discord community called Foam After Dark that myself and Not Enough Nerf started. You're welcome to join if you want. We just hang out, talk foam. If that sounds right up your alley, please join us. But until then, guys, I'm Bots and Blasters once again. I'll see you guys next time on the battlefield. Maybe with these set up. Let me know.